So I'm just curious, though. Why not Trump, though? Well, it, it could be. <laughs> it could be. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, you know so, some people get mad on, on both sides of the bat, so I didn't want to. I'm him. just, uh, okay. yeah, I'm, I just want to. Okay. So who would like to be our first table topic speaker? I can go. Okay, go ahead, Shehu. Shehu, give me a number between 1 and 16. 3. 3, okay. Now, this is a hypothetical question, okay? So, the, the, if, if you did not want to get the vaccine, how would you justify your decision? If, hypothetically, you did not want to get the vaccine, how would you justify your decision? Mr. Table Topic Master, fellow member. The question is, if I don't want to get the vaccine, how do I justify um, not getting the vaccine? That's an interesting question because I thought about this some time ago, but finding that it's not even going to get to me for a very long time, gave me that relief and time to think about it because they are starting from the older generation, except you are out care um, workers, which they call the essential workers. So for me, that gave me time to think about what to do when it comes to um, my age group, it's time to take that vaccine. So I'll just think about it, look at the result of the vaccine. What as I'm not, I don't normally like take a lot of vaccine, but because of if it's required, if I want to travel or something, I heard that you need to present your certificate or something to show for that. I don't have any choice. I just have to take the vaccine. There's nothing I can do about it. It's not something that going to kill me that I know of. So I just going to take it and not for my sake, but because of other people that need that protection. So I don't know if I'm giving full justice to this question, but I'm just going to think about it um, when time comes and if there's no other way to go about it, I'm going to take the vaccine. Mr. Table Topic Master. I didn't see the time though. I oh yeah, Arthur was there uh, showing you the time. Oh, okay. No, I see. Yeah, yeah very, that was a very good answer. Okay, who would like to be our next table topic speaker? I can go next. Okay, Glennis, a number between one and 16. Um, number one. Okay. Would you get the vaccine soon? Would you get the vaccine soon? Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. My fellow credible communicators, I've been asked the question, would I get the vaccine soon? The short answer is no. <laughs> I Fortunately, I don't fall in the age group that I have to take it right now. And not that I'm hesitant because it's a vaccine. And I, when I think about taking the vaccine and if it's going to help keep other people safe, then eventually I will get it. I'm, I'm not going to be the first in line though. <laughs> and I'll, I'll just qualify that by saying, I, I don't normally take medicine <laughs> much for anything. I, I literally have to be told I'm going to die probably before I, I would actually take a medicine. Right now I'm having actually a pain in my arm and I'm not taking anything because I just typically don't. 
um, it's something that's probably going to clear up in a few days and I'll be fine. I just think I just slept on it wrong, <laughs> but it's been bothering me all day. <laughs> However, I'm not in the medication. I really have to be very sick. And, and it's not necessarily because it's a new medication. That's part of it because there's side effects to every medication. And the doctors may not tell you right off because they don't always know. <laughs> it's going to take years before they really understand what the side effects for taking this new vaccine is. I may be impacted by it and I may not, but if it comes down to keeping other individuals safe, I will forego my personal preference and take the vaccine. Mr. Tabletop is master. Very good, Glenna. Okay, who would like to be our next table topic? I'll go, Steve. Oh, okay. Uh, who was that? Nagam. Yes. Okay. Okay, Nagam. A number between two and sixteen. Um, ten. Ten. Okay. Well, you have a a fair advantage on this one. <laughs> because this this question comes from the contest. So since you were at the contest, you you get, you know, you heard this question before. Should the Monday after Super Bowl Sunday be made a national holiday? <laughs> Should the Monday after Super Bowl Sunday be made a national holiday? Mr. Uh, Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters, I've been asked the question, should the Monday after Super Bowl be made a national holiday. While I don't watch football, and if you tell me, try to tell me about football, it will sound like a foreign language to me, but I will say yes. You say holiday, I immediately say yes. I don't think anyone should say no to holiday. Um, everybody deserve a break. Everybody is hardworking and deserves a break. Here is my little bit of input on football. So while I don't want really watch football, I do watch soccer. Not a huge fan like my husband is who has two screens going at the same time. I swear one time he had a TV and a computer. It was the World Cup and he, he was watching two games at the same time. I actually took a picture of him doing this and he was of course yelling at both screens and <laughs> shouting things and getting excited. And I get that this is I believe that will probably look like someone who is a fan of football. And if they go through this amount of energy and anxiety, then I think they deserve a holiday the very next day. And so I vote, yes, count me in. We all deserve another day of sleep, Mr. Table Topics Master. Great job. Uh, I think Sharon, you, you also had your hand up. Did you, would you like to go next? Yes. Okay. Sure, thank you. If somebody wants to count my as and ums, please. Oh, okay, I'll count them for you. Okay, thank so you. a number between two and 16. Fifteen? Um, Fifteen, okay. Has anything in the news made you mad recently? Has anything in the news made you mad recently? So thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master, fellow credible communicators. As I've been asked the question, has anything in the news recently made me mad? There's probably several things, quite a few things. <laughs> One of the things I think that bothers me the most that I've heard about in the news is the is the social media's trying to take away people's accounts because they don't like what they're saying. To me, that is a full, if we're talking about constitutional rights and your ability to have an opinion 
and ability, um, the right to express your opinion. I think censoring people and saying, you can't have your account anymore, seems like it being treated like a pariah if you are not using or espousing what they think is right. I don't think that's right that they should do that. I do think that we, in this country, and I think that's what makes it such a great country, is we've always had the ability to speak and debate different ideas. And if you take away that ability to do that, then you're taking away one of our basic rights. So I think that's one of the things in the recent news that makes me angry is that people on either side should not have their right to express their opinion taken away. Do I think it needs to be done when you're expressing your opinion to do it in a, a non-offensive? I mean, people are going to be offended by what you say if they're on the other side, but to not go out and purposely um, to hurt people. I think your opinion should be voiced in a reasonable fashion, but I think people should have the right to have, to express that opinion. And that has made me angry if people take that away. Mr. Table Topics Master. Oh, excellent job and, and very smooth use of the word of the day. Perfect. Oh. Okay, who would like to be our next table topic speaker? Okay, okay, Maha. Maha, give me a number between two and 16. Oh, you're muted, you'll have to unmute. Number seven. Okay, that's the number I always like too. Okay. What organizations do you trust for your news? What organizations do you trust for your news? Thank you, uh, Mr. Table Topics Master and uh, dear fellow Toast uh, Toast. <laughs> Toastmasters, right? Toastmasters right. Right. members. <laughs> um, so in regards to your question, which organization do I trust the most for uh, the news? Um, it's very important that as human beings with an intellect that we hear from uh, different sides and from uh, different perspectives. Um, although we try to do that, at the end of the day, uh, we each one of us has their own value systems uh, in life and their own uh, opinions on um, current and past issues. Uh, that does make us uh, gear toward certain uh, news outlets more, more than others. And that sometimes could be a uh, subconscious thing that we do. Uh, while I try to listen to different organizations, I am by, uh, by nature and by value system more, more liberal, I would say, when it comes to politics. And uh, I, I do follow more liberal uh, news uh, outlets such as I'll share with you, uh, I'm a big supporter of NPR. I love their, um, I love their programmings. Uh, I do feel that they uh, cover a wide range of topics um, and they frequently, even though they are in overall a liberal uh, uh, radio, they do bring uh, perspectives from, from different sides and they do bring, um, they do bring um, news from all over the world. So uh, you don't just get the news of what's happening locally, but I feel that when I listen to NPR, I also am aware of what's happening overseas. And as we know, politics is all tied. Um, and in addition, like I said, in addition to politics, 
they cover science, they cover, cover medicine, they cover social issues. So, uh, so far, um, NPR has really been one of my, my most favorite radio, uh, radio sh um, radios and uh, news, news um, outlets. Uh, that being said, uh, I don't necessarily um, align myself with, you know, all of their values. Uh, but when it comes to to balance, I feel that they they do achieve balance, even though this balance could be skewed to to one side more than more than the other. When I compare it with other news outlets and other organizations, uh, I. I do feel they try their best to uh, to cover what's what's out there and bring uh, news to the people without necessarily an agenda behind it. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Excellent, excellent job. Hmm, that's how they. Um... Minnesota, how did you go all the way to Minnesota? Who, who went to Minnesota? I, I said the, the radio, the radio, the NPR, right? News. Oh, no, and national, national public radio. Oh, and as in, oh, and as in okay. Nancy. Oh, there's the one that is NPR. I thought it was <laughs> NPR, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I'm sure they have their uh, section in Minnesota. <laughs> they have, oh, they have okay. one in every state. So uh, Shehu is fact checking all your answers. Yeah, 91.7. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to learn what yeah, you're yeah. saying. I want to yeah. see what's about. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Who would like to be our next table topic speaker? I believe that leaves me. Partha. Okay, good, good, Partha. Okay, Partha, a number between two and 16. 16. Okay. Has anything in the news inspired you recently? Has anything in the news inspired you recently? Mr. Table Topics Master, my fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. So the question for me is, has anything in the recent past from the news inspired me? Now, a little bit of a context is that I have made a conscious decision to stay away from news as much as possible, um, at least in a very traditional sense. That is, I don't have a TV with cable and uh, I don't watch news per se. But of course, I am on Facebook and Reddit and social media, so the news just comes to me. Um, and that's not something you can actively prevent, but that's at least more relevant news and uh, it's more like some something that you really have to hear about that continuously gets shared. With that being said, this is indeed a tough question to answer, but um, I still remember during the Black Lives Matter, there was uh, one particular person in uh, Washington DC that led people through uh, to uh, his house. And like, it was a huge house. And um, I still remember because uh, he was also an Indian American. And uh, so after the event, it was covered in the news and, and it was quote unquote, celebrated as a hero, but I'm not into hero worship or anything, but uh, I felt like that was actually a very courageous act. And um, when uh, people were running away from the cops, he led pe protesters, uh, um, uh, he gave them a place and and that was on the news. And uh, and he didn't really make a big deal out of it. And it, it was just, and I feel like um, the basic empathy and compassion should be a normalized thing that, um, inspired me quite a bit. Back to you, Mr. David Dobbs, Master. So it sounds like he uh, didn't want those people to be pariahs. Okay, uh, looks like we still have time. So has anyone not had a chance yet? Uh, let's see, 
Uh, looks Just like you, Emily. Steve. Okay. Shehu, did you go? Yeah, I did. You, you did? Okay. You need to go, Steve. Okay, Shehu, uh, just pick a number for me. Um, it's it's 2 to 14. What about 2? Two? 2, okay. So here's, here's my question. It's another hypothetical question. If you thought someone should get the vaccine, how would you convince him to get the vaccine? So hypothetically, if I thought someone should get the vaccine, how would I convince him to get the vaccine? Well, the, the way I would convince someone, and I do think some people should get the vaccine. I don't want to get it, but I do think some people should get it. People that I think should get it are people that are at risk, like if you got diabetes or if you are old. I'm old, but I expect to live another 30 years. So I don't, I don't want to get it because who knows, who knows what, what would happen, you know, what kind of effects that thing would have in 20 years. But if someone has, um, you know, what they call comorbidities, then I think they should get it. I've, I've got a friend who's uh, almost my age, a little bit younger, but his dad passed away at 55 from a heart attack. And he, he, he wanted to get it. I, him to get. I got another friend. She's a nurse, and you know she's in danger all the time. And she's also a cancer survivor. And she posts on Facebook that she got it. And I said that's that was smart. So I think it's an individual decision. If you if you are in danger, you should you should get it. Uh, give you peace of give you peace of mind. If if you're young, I think, and if you or if you, you know, expect to live a long time, I would just want to know more about how this vaccine works. It's a new kind of vaccine that changes, you know, it takes over your, your cells um, reproduction. And I would want to know more about how come, you know, how they know that that will not have you know, effects in the future. Mr. Table Topics Master. Okay, so, so. So, Steve, how do you know you are going to leave more Teddy? Well, yet, I don't. So. I don't know. I, my, <laughs> my, dad, my, my dad lived My dad lived a useful life until he was 100. He lived to 104, but the last four in a nursing home, I wouldn't want to live in a nursing home. But he lived a useful life until he was 100. Now oh, my mom, okay. though, my mom passed away at 71. So, hmm. you know, so it could be, you know, it could be either way. I thought you have something. I needed some clues. Oh, okay. So that's why. <laughs> okay. Well, the, the, the best thing I could say if, that I think is, like Glenna said, don't, don't depend on medicine. Step one yeah. is to believe that you will be alive for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm curious, speaking of vaccine, and, and I've heard different people yeah, yeah. speak similar things. Maha, what do you think about it? Oh, yeah, that's a good, good question. Yeah. You, you oh, mute. you have to unmute. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah you I to said unmute. the right person, right? Uh, unmute, Maha. Maha, you're on mute. Here, let me send you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, I was waiting until everybody uh, is done to uh, say something uh, because I, yeah, I am obliged as a healthcare professional to, to give my opinion and it's, every, it's up to everyone to make their own choice. So do you wanna leave that till the end? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So, um, you know, let's look at the, the numbers now. So in the whole world, probably over 70, 80 million people have received the vaccine. So how much more data do we want? We have data now from over 80 million people in the world. That is more data than we, we have ever received on any medications or any vaccine that has ever been invented. So there's plenty of data out there, number one. Number two, and, and you know, if there are side effects, we should be hearing a lot more out of these 80 million people. So far, we've heard very slim, a slim number of side effects to the vaccine. Number two is, um, you know, we want to wait years from now to see if something comes up. 
you know, the, the science behind this vaccine is actually not very different from the science of the other vaccines that have, that we've been using, like polio and measles and, you know, all of these different vaccines. Um, and the other thing is it doesn't really take over your cell re uh, reproduction. It does not insert itself into the DNA. It does not. Uh, it does not change your DNA. The, the cells, they see this, this um, so it's, a, it's an mRNA, they take this code, and from this code, they make a separate DNA that does not go at all into your DNA, and then the protein, which is the antibody, is made. Uh, other other uh, vaccines in the past, mm. they've used also a code. It was not an RNA code, but it was it was a code. And to toward this code, our cells made the antibody. So the mechanism is really not very different from other vaccines that have existed. Number three. Um, if we say, you know, I agree that there are high risk people that are a higher priority to, to get the vaccine, but we also have to take into account other things that are happening, such as, you know, look at all the people who have died from COVID. I could get the, uh, I could get the virus today and because I'm healthy, I will have no symptoms. And yet I will go and spend some time with my parents who have comorbidities give it to them and you know and they will suffer the consequences of of that virus so here you know it's not about only you know whether what will happen if i get the vaccine i think that we all have a duty as human beings to stop the spread of this virus and the more people get vaccinated the more the less and less this virus will spread and not only the virus is continuing to spread, now we have variants, the virus is mutating. And as long as the numbers of the virus continue to grow, the more and more mutations we're gonna have. And yeah, it's possible at one point that the vaccine will not, will not work, but that's not the case today. So in order to prevent more and more mutations, we need to cut down on the number of the spreading virus. And the way we do that is by more and more people get, getting vaccinated. And the choice is yours. Hey, thank you. Great, great, great. I, I just want to say that I already got the vaccine. I heard you all people say, oh, oh. Oh, oh, I, I got it this Saturday. Uh, since mm. we're, you know, I'm in education, yeah, we also yeah. provided that option. And I did not even uh, blink. I, I want to add to the, uh, what, what was it Dr. Fauci said, 67% or uh, of people that when you do get the vaccination or get the, the you, you add to the herd immunity and that's how you spread the, um, the, the less exposure. So hoping I'm doing yeah. my part. Yeah, each person that gets it is contributing to herd immunity and therefore uh, lessening the chance of someone else who have comorbidities getting it. I also received it and my parents, my 81 year old father and 69 year old mother got it, who don't have comorbidities as well. Hmm. Did any I, of you have any symptoms? You know, like the fever or-, or mm. You, you know, like I, uh, yeah, I didn't have any symptoms and they didn't. I have a, I have a brother-in-law who is like 50 years old, he, he got it. And he had, he had, yeah, he had fevers and chills. Uh, and those are reactions from uh, the immune system uh, uh, producing the antibodies. So, so these are not bad symptoms. These are good symptoms. Okay. Yeah, I, I, um, I have asthma. And uh, when I got it, the, the day of really didn't feel anything, but at night I started feeling a little heavy, a little hard to breathe. Um, and I am usually an owl, a night owl, but that night I slept like I've never slept before. But next day, I didn't, only a little bit of uh, pain. My arm was sore from the, but I don't feel anything anymore. So it was gone. Okay. I have a 96 year old uh, aunt who is getting her second shot mm -hmm. today at her. Uh, her living center. She lives in Cedarville mm -hmm. in Northville. So mm -hmm. 
yeah so i haven't heard of her having any bad yeah. reactions yet so i guess you'll all know if we turn into zombies right next meeting <laughs> <laughs> so i wanted to mention to steve that do you remember one of your early speeches during the pandemic when you found that uh, oh yeah oh yeah from the tree so recently on my my husband and i walk every day and i found a tree that had those oh yeah, yeah. and it made me think <laughs> to ask you because you were not quite done with your experiment with those you were drinking the tea or something so i drink that tea every day do you <laughs> yeah and uh, the, the, re the reason I, I'm drinking it is uh, when I first drank it, it, it made my lungs feel better. Even though I had no problem with my lungs, it made them feel better. So I figured it, it does good. And then I wasn't expecting it, but it seems to have healed my uh, torn meniscus. It's just gone. The torn meniscus, like, like it's not torn anymore. Oh, hmm. Uh, but I'll so I I take it. What well, tea is that again? Well, it's 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 this right here. It's uh, <laughs> uh, I, oh, don't look like yeah, yeah, it's, no, called, no, it's no. called sweet gum, <laughs> sweet gum tree. It's a sweet gum tree. So you make it yourself? Uh -huh. I I make it myself. Yeah, I I put I, I I doubled the dose now. Well, I tell you why I doubled the dose. I I've been taking it for almost a year. Actually, no, I've been taking it. Yeah, almost a year. I've been yeah, because it be about a year. Yeah, I yeah, remember so. your speech. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I've been taking it for almost a year. And I was, it's also antifungal. And I was hoping it would kill my toenail fungus. But after a year, no, no improvement. Uh, <laughs> so I doubled it. I doubled it. I doubled the dose. <laughs> and let's see if it could happen. Now, I'll give you, though, an update on the effectiveness of on COVID. I have a, a friend who got it, who got COVID. Oh, I'm sorry. So I, I made him some tea, gave it to him, and he said it felt like it helped. So I made him, I made him more. I made him a few gallons mm. of it and, and brought it over. And I, I, I made it way stronger than than I made it for myself. Um, but he mm. didn't recover, you know, real fast. You know, so you know, it's not like it's a, you know, it's a miracle cure. I mean, he he's uh, as far as I know, he's okay. But okay. but um, he then he does have comorbidities. But he he um, it lasted about a month. Okay, so yeah, this is five twenty one. Very interesting topic today. <laughs> um, so we're just going to move to the second part. If we have more time, we can go on with that. I'm just going to call on Gladys. She's a general evaluator and also evaluator for Naga speech. Learning so over to you. Thank you, Shehu. As um, Shehu mentioned, I am the general evaluator and I will be evaluating Naga speech. First, I want to apologize if there's a glitch <laughs> in, in me coming through. I've been having glitches since the meeting started and this is also an apology to Nagam. So many times in your speech, I was cut off, but I, I, I got most of it. So I'm hoping I get through this without any problems. <laughs> so on to Nagam's evaluation. Nagam, um, again, wonderful job with your speech as you generally do. And because I had some difficulties, I, I'm going to just focus on the good things because I really didn't catch anything bad. And I think if there was anything bad, I, I feel a little bit, it may be unfair because it could have been the glitches with my network. However, I, I'm going to start with your introduction. Wasn't actually an, an attention grabbing <laughs> introduction, but the speech was about a standardized test. So I don't know how much attention grabbing you can get with that. However, it, it, it explained what Widwa, Wit, I'm sorry, Wit Wida was. I, I'm going to, I might say Widwa throughout this because there's an application where I work and they use that acronym and it's Widwa. <laughs> so when I saw it, that was the first thing that popped in my mind. I was like, okay, is she talking about an application? So Wida, 
you explained that it's a standardized test for students where English is not their first language. So I got that from the speech. The body of your speech, it was well organized. I had no problem following. And I actually learned what WIDWA was and will remember that. I also like the conclusion where you kind of tied it together because when I read your description, I was wondering when I'm going to learn the new meaning of WIDA. <laughs> And your conclusion actually tied that together when you mentioned we the people and some others, but I just remember we the people. <laughs> I didn't catch everything else. Your gestures were good. You had natural facial expressions and from what hand movements that I could see in, in your head, I could, those were all natural. Of course, you weren't standing, so I couldn't see much more. There were a few little filler words, but nothing obsessive. And I'm sure that Sharon's going to give you that piece. And you use the word of the day. So overall, good speech. I look forward to your next speech. And thank you, Nagam. All right, so moving on, I'm going to ask the timer.